Hi, I'm Basil Patterson, New York Secretary of State. Carrying a portable container of gasoline in the trunk of your car may get you to your destination. Then again, it could take you to your final destination. The good, the bad, and the ugly show. Hello and welcome back to The Good, The Bad and The Ugly Show. So, this week's subject is a little bit different. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you, it's kind of weird. So, um, we are taking a look today at a colouring book. So, um, adult colouring books have become a bit of a thing. So, um, it used to be, you know, just for children, like you get like, you know, Roger Rabbit ones and stuff. But, you know, now we've got like, um, sort of tattoo art colouring books and therapeutic colouring books for you know, adults and various different types of people. So, today's colouring book, it's not exactly butterflies or bunnies or anything, you know, that you can really uh, take a lot of joy from. No, the subject of today's colouring book is serial killers. That's right, someone went and did it. They made a serial killer colouring in book. So, um, yeah, let's take a little look. So, here it is. That's right. The Serial Killer Colouring Book. Um, an adult colouring book full of famous serial killers. Lovely. Uh, so there we go. We've got them on the front cover there, look. We can, uh, can we make out who these people are? Do we know who these people are? Well, depends how much of a sicko you are. I know them all. Um, let's have a look inside. So, um, yeah, an adult book for serial killers. <laughs> an adult book for serial killers. Right. Um, I'm not sure it's designed for serial killers. Maybe it is, I don't know. But you get a free book, and it's um, that one there, look. Um, take the code, look, take the code. If anyone wants that code, um, feel free, because I'm sure it's still there and still available. I won't, I won't use it. So, uh, first person to do that wins. So, uh, yeah, who do we start with? We start with the son of Sam, David Berkowitz. This photograph of the man accused of killing six and wounding seven was taken by police this morning. The composite on your right was the first of five released by the police over a year as they attempted to get the public's help in finding the maniac murderer. Police transported David Berkowitz from headquarters to Brooklyn Central Booking after my sources say he confessed to being the 44 killer. Now, yeah, there's been uh, numerous movies made about him. There was um, there was quite a good one that was all about like um, New York during that time and the blackouts and stuff. There's been good documentaries as well. Really good one recently called The Sons of Sam. You might have seen it on Netflix. I don't know, maybe. But um, yeah, that's a messed up colouring. It's a messed up first image, isn't it? Jesus. So there you go. That just shows you a little bit of what this book is like. Each page has the black bit behind as well. I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe better, better colouring in. Don't know. But you move straight on to uh, Gary Ridgway. I'm not really familiar with him. The Green River Killer. Um, 49 Victims. So we won't do every single page. I guess I'll shuffle through and I'll stop on... Hmm. That's hilarious. For all the wrong reasons. The Shoe Fetish Slayer. I mean, Christ almighty. There's some messed up people out there, aren't there? Sort of people who would buy a book like this. Um, so we'll, we'll carry on. Um, Eileen War, Eileen Ward, uh, Eileen Warnus. Led from Marion County Jail, she gave no indication that she would plead no contest to three murder charges. Instead, talking about dropping her public defenders and hiring private attorney Steve Glazer. But only seconds after being named her attorney, Glazer surprised everyone and told the court that Warnus wanted to change her plea. With her adoptive mother watching on, the nation's first known serial killer pleaded no contest to killing Dick Humphreys and Troy Burris in Marion County, David Spears in Citrus County. She's, like, pretty famous, because obviously there's a film made called Monster, um, all about her, and um, I kind of, like, it's, it's a controversial one, this, because, like, she kind of got treated really badly by the world, and she did what um, she felt was the appropriate response to that. I don't know. I mean, what do you do? Let's carry on, anyway. Um, right, so, uh, yeah, Pogo the Clown, um, the killer clown. I mean, this is uh, John Wayne Gacy. Terry, the horrible truth to suburban contractor John Gacy's rambling statements to police last week is becoming more and more evident with each passing day. Six more bodies unearthed from the basement crawl space of Gacy's Norwood Park Township home today, bringing to 15 the number found there since Friday. Everybody knows John Wayne Gacy by now, anyway. Um, terrifying guy. He was like well to do. He, you know, he owned like a fast food, fast food manager. He was also quite a celebrity. Uh, I think he ran for like mayor or something at one point. 
terrifying stuff. Move on next. Um, yep, I don't really know that person too well. Um, the narcissist, is it the narcissist or I don't know. He was a he was a killer as well. So we move on. The happy face killer. I've heard about him. Look at that. Deeply disturbing stuff, isn't it? Isn't it? And the smiley face and the simplicity of that is just. Yeah, just wrong. Uh, freeway killer. Here's another one. Um, yeah, let's go. Okay, the honeymoon killers. Um, yes, there's a film about them as well, I believe. Um, who have we got here? Yep, another one. Um, let's keep carry on. Carry on. Peter Sutcliffe, the guy who wasn't in the Beatles. Um, yeah, the Yorkshire Ripper. So um, everyone knows about this as well. Yeah. So let's uh, let's go straight. Who who have we got here? Let's go straight on um, the five to one killer. I don't really know that. Um, Make me think of Dolly Parton, but I don't want to associate her with that. Um, yep, that guy there. That guy there as well. Let's uh, let's let's keep keep going to be recognised. Someone obviously Richard Ramirez, the 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 Night Stalker. At first, Los Angeles police thought that the murder of a young woman last March was an isolated act of violence, but since then they've come to believe it was connected to a wide-ranging series of assaults by a killer who's become known as the Night Stalker, a killer who apparently struck again during the weekend. We have a report from Nadine Berger. I mean, this is just, it's all like this. It's all just very disturbing imagery here, really. Um, yeah, I might just uh, carry on flicking through... The dating game. Okay, so the guy who was on like TV on a, on a date on a dating show, and then I don't know I might be getting that wrong. Um, Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy's one of the most famous ones of all time. There are actually like huge amounts of, of Bundy fans out there, which I don't really understand. But people are people, and they will do strange things. A judge in Miami today followed the jury's recommendation and sentenced Theodore Bundy to die in the electric chair for the murder of two co-eds. Bundy is the 136th person under death sentence in Florida. Ed Rabel reports. Before pronouncing the sentence, Judge Edward Cowart let Bundy make a statement. I'm not asking for mercy, for I find it somewhat absurd to ask for mercy for something I did not do. So I will be tortured for and will suffer for it and receive the pain for that act. But I will not share the burden for the guilt. But um, yeah, that's, uh, that's that one. And you got the Zodiac Killer as well. Search goes on in San Francisco for the man known as the Zodiac Killer. The elements involved today included psychiatrists, astrologists, and police guards for school buses. Terry Drinkwater reports. Um, who no one really knows who the Zodiac Killer is, so that could be him. Well, that, that looks a bit more like the guy from Buggles. I don't know. But um, yeah, they never found him. There were some good movies made about this. In fact, the first film about the Zodiac Killer was made as an attempt to draw him out. They thought that they put an advert like saying that if, if you turn up to this, you can do a competition and win a car if you come and see this film. And they thought because he was such a kind of like an ego maniac that that would draw him in and he would try and go in, enter the competition. So they tried to find him that way. It failed. The film wasn't very good anyway. Um, but yeah, that, that didn't go as well as they planned it. The Freeway Killer, uh, William, um, uh, what, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, this guy here, Albert Fish, absolutely deeply terrifying. I watched a documentary about him once and it was so horrible, I turned it off halfway through and I've still yet to finish it. Like the wolf in the background there. I mean, these are very simplistic pictures, but there's just something really unsettling about it all. And that's the point, I guess. Um, yeah. Who else have we got here? Like the skull. There we go. Uh, yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. Pee Wee. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. It never ended like this. Ed Gein. There we go. So Ed Gein's a famous one, uh, completely famous because like he inspired Norman Bates and like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and all that stuff. I mean, he actually literally used to like wear dead people's skin and dance around in them. Maybe he didn't dance. I don't know. I wasn't there. Honestly, I wasn't there, Gov. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's a famous one. Um, it's it, you know, go and look. If you don't know, go and look him up. And uh, yeah, there's there's many documentaries and again many films 
There was a really creepy film made in the 70s called Deranged, and that is almost the actual story. I mean, they changed the character names and stuff around so they didn't get sued, but that is the closest film you'll probably get to an Egin film. Oh, a closest decent film, anyway. Really disturbing imagery in that film. I, um, it, it stays with me, it stays with me. This is horrible. This was obviously in my, in my motherland of uh, England. This was the House of Horrors, uh, Fred and Rose West. They were despicable, nasty, nasty people. Names of three women in the garden. A builder, Frederick West, has been charged with their murders. Detectives say there's a distinct possibility there may be more bodies. The first day of drilling inside the house and another grim find for detectives. What they suspect is two further bodies under a concrete floor. Um, that house got completely demolished as well. They, they took it down and I think they put it a garden, you know, because they didn't want to ever build there again. No one would ever really want to live there. Um, but that was in a, up, up sort of north of England, I believe. Here we go, H.H. H. Holmes. In 1895, Chicago, there lived a human monster torture chambers, secret passageways, vats of acid, and deadly vaults were just some of the horrific discoveries unearthed in the castle of H.H. H. Holmes. Um, the Murder Castle, Horror Hotel, as it's also known. This was Chicago, I believe, um, during the time of the World's Fair, actually. A lot of people who attended the World's Fair were staying there. They went missing in this uh, horrible kind of like hotel of... of um, decapitation and murder yeah um, another famous one another famous one I don't think I've ever seen a film about it and I think there should be one if there isn't um, Harold Shipman this was very close to home because uh, I had a friend who um, I think this was their doctor they lived in Manchester and uh, remember this happening at the time and yeah there you go the angel death as he's called he killed himself in prison, I believe, um, which is a, an also lovely connected thing to a, um, a colouring in book. Oh, here's the Moors murderers. That's Hyde Police Headquarters, the centre of one of the biggest ever police search operations in this country. Inside now, detectives are studying a police file, which day by day grows in content. And it's collecting evidence which might confirm the killings of young children up on the Pennine Moors about seven or eight miles from here and police have taken away from the left luggage department at Manchester Central Station two suitcases. Yep, you got um, uh, Ian Brady and Myra Hindley, and um, they were awful, despicable people as well. Never, never faces I thought would ever appear in a colouring book. And then you've got uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, who, um, there's a brilliant film about him released recently called um, My Friend, or like, My Friend uh, Dahmer or something like that. It's basically like um, like Napoleon, Dynam Napoleon Dynamite with a sort of more sinister ending. It's all about his school years and like how weird he was at school and the weird pranks and stuff he used to do. It's all true story. And there was a, um, it's not the first time that he's been put into like sort of comic book form because there's a whole graphic novel about him written by a friend of his from school. So, um, yeah, there you go. And we get to the end of the book. It says, final words. This book has been created by best-selling true crime author Jack Rosewood and his team to satisfy the creative fans in this twisted and interesting world of serial killers. There you go. If you liked this book, please leave a review on Amazon and make sure to add pictures of your artwork. We would love to see how it turned out. Right. I mean, it's, it's great. It's just so ridiculous. But people do love this stuff. Um, I don't personally want to use colour in this book because I think it's cool the way it is. I want to keep it as an oddity because it really is an oddity. Um, yeah. So if you want to purchase purchase a copy of this book then, then go and do it and maybe if you have a copy and you have coloured it in add the pictures to our like go onto our um facebook group the good the bad and the ugly show and add your uh, finished color coloring in pictures on that or comment or whatever but um i just thought i would share this with you today make a quick video about it because it's just a weird thing isn't it anyhow please like share and subscribe to the good the bad and the ugly show because there's no room left in hell. Most of us will probably never worry about spending time in jail, but if you are ever involved in the criminal justice system, you will need a lawyer who can explain the system to you. Great Halloween parties begin at Walgreens. Candy, party decorations, masks, costumes, makeup. Everything you need for Halloween fun now at Walgreens.